Roku's new streaming stick, a speaker that knows what you want, and oh my, the Keurig and K-Pod controversy. I'm Callie Lewis. Welcome to Geeky. This episode of Geeky TV is brought to you by LegalZoom. Today we have a live stream at 1 p.m. Texas time where we'll talk about our plans for torture. Both John P. and I are both going to start training with these guys. Hubba ah. hubba. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to be bringing you along for the ride, and I hope, please, please join in on the workouts with us. We'll all be in pain together. How's that for a plan? <laughs> Geekbeat.tv slash fitness for all our updates on that and the recorded version of our stream. Okay, first things first, except for the first thing I did first, but whatever. A couple weeks ago, we did a live stream where we got a live demo of the Sketchbook app from Autodesk. Renee taught John P. and I to draw, and a ton of you followed along at home. We had the chat rooms going, we all learned together, just like we're gonna be in pain together. And it was so much fun, whereas the pain, not so much. Anyway, I keep getting distracted because I'm hyped up on coffeedirect.com coffee. <laughs> You guys, focus. <laughs> I'm focus. trying to focus. <laughs> you guys shared your drawings with us way better than mine. So it was really fun, and we continue to get really positive feedback from you. So my question is, what else do you want to learn? What live demos and trials should we set up? If you could have anything you would want, what would it be? Leave a comment below, or as always, email or tag us on social. We're listening. If I could have anything I want, I'd want this 40 node Raspberry Pi supercomputer. Paul Dixon posted it in the Google Plus Geeks community at geekbeat.tv slash geeks. David Gill bought it so that, built it, I mean, not bought it, he built it from scratch so that he could put distributed software to the test in an environment he was happy with. He got 40 Raspberry Pis with 4,700 megahertz Broadcom processors and 20 gigabytes of RAM. Plus it has five terabytes of storage, almost half a terabyte of flash storage, a wireless access point, an internal 10 100 LAN, all in a box, a nice colorful box too, that's only about 15 by 22 by 10 inches. Impressive. And he did it all here in Dallas at the Dallas Makerspace. Love it. And David, come on, come in in person, show me. Dude. If you didn't catch it, we did a review yesterday of the K-Pod. It's a Kickstarter project that basically retrofits almost any coffee maker into a Keurig machine. I love the idea. So does Scott Ellis and everyone around here. If you didn't see it, go to geeky.tv slash K-Pod. You only have a few days left to support the Kickstarter project. Now, it seems like you guys loved it equally as much. Lots of comments and people pledging and excitement by the idea. Also, quite a few of you asked about the big controversy over Green Mountain trying to lock down their K-Cup platform. If you haven't heard, Green Mountain, who produces the Keurig machine, has promised to launch a new version of the Keurig machine, which will only be able to use their branded approved K-Cups. I guess that means that they're changing the shape of the cups or the shape of the machine or both. Who knows? Nobody knows yet. But when I do know is that it's angering a lot of people. They won't be able to use just any K-Cup brand out there, which means competition is not allowed. I personally don't use Green Mountain Coffee. I use another brand that I like better. I will no longer be able to buy what I want for my Keurig machine if this happens. And we all know that the lack of competition in the marketplace is not a good thing for consumers. Prices jack up, all that stuff. So if devices for competitive K-Cups like the K-Pod can become popular enough, that means that all the other brands out there who make K-Cups don't have to shut down their businesses when the Keurig 2.0 comes out. But they have to fund first and come to market and get popular. And that's where Kickstarter and you guys come in. So that's my opinion on that topic. And by the way, if you have a brilliant idea and want to make sure you get legal protection behind you to keep the idea yours, go to LegalZoom. They make it super easy to set up a corporation, LLC or DBA. I've used them before and I was very happy with the process. It was pretty much painless, which is what you want, right? Because you really should be focusing on the guts of your business and making money. You can also trademark your idea through them, get a power of attorney. They offer all kinds of services. So go get your protection, LegalZoom.com and use code GeekBeat. Roku also has a version 2.0 coming out of their streaming stick. It's a stick that plugs into your HDMI port on your TV and allows you to stream content.
content like Netflix or Hulu Plus from your computer or mobile devices to your TV. Think Chromecast. Except unlike Chromecast, Roku's streaming stick comes with a nice lineup of apps that you can browse for content and a remote control. I like these additions, and I expect it's not as buggy as Chromecast can be. The new version is $49.99. We're seeing a lot of movement in the smart audio space. A lot of companies want to predict what you want, when you want it, and play your music for you rather than you telling it what you want to play. The $399 Aether is an interesting addition. It's a small speaker that works entirely on its own. It doesn't need a Bluetooth device like your phone to connect to it in order to play music. It'll work with a variety of streaming services. They haven't said which ones yet, but I would expect Pandora and Spotify or RDO would be in the mix. At first, you're going to have to teach it your listening preferences. For example, when I'm doing laundry, occasionally I do that, I prefer to listen to some upbeat music. You know, get moving, right? When I'm working though, I prefer singer-songwriter or classical to keep me focused at the task at hand. So you ask, how does it learn your tastes? Well, you can just twist the face of the speaker left or right to skip forwards or backwards. If you keep twisting to the left, it'll change up your selection entirely. It'll play another genre, for example. But it also comes with voice control, so you can literally tell it the song that you want to listen to or the artist. If you always wanna to listen to The Fray on Saturday mornings, why would you not? It'll automatically know that and play it for you. You're busy, relax, let your appliances do the thinking for you. By the way, everyone, with all the talk of the new building, one of the most popular questions we've been getting is, can I visit the studio and watch a show when you move in? Well, heck, you can visit the studio now and watch your live taping, but the answer is yes. We will have even cooler stuff for you to tour in the new building, so please do visit if you're in the Dallas area or you can get to Dallas. We'd love to see you face to face. Okay, with that, I'm going to head to my computer and get to know you more on a digital level at least. I'll see you in our 24 seven chat room or in our Google Plus Geeks community or on Google Plus or Twitter. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'm Callie Lewis, bye. And thanks for all the coffee suggestions. Yeah, gonna go, maybe drink some more, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, I think so.